We're here today with Alan Brown, uh, Wexford Youth's Women's Under-17 Manager. Alan, uh, this time last year we were here, uh, it was a great night at the awards, uh, for Clare Awards last season, slightly different this year. Yeah, absolutely. So we had, I suppose, the whole club here last year, uh, men's, women, boys, girls, and it was uh, a coordinated, I suppose, uh, awards night, which was fantastic. And uh, the media team, including myself and Ronan, would have had screens up showing all footage of the year and all. So that was fantastic. I suppose people were able to speak and all. Whereas this year, uh, it's like we're doing awards via Zoom. So it's, uh, I suppose, the personal touch isn't in it, but it's still obviously the award. It probably means more to people because when you come through the circumstances that you're in of the year we've had to win awards, uh, it just shows how much you have worked hard and progressed, I suppose, to put yourself in the frame. So, yeah, different this year, but still uh, very important. And uh, player of the season, Cern Ward. Player of the season, Cern Ward, uh, so she was voted as the player's player of the season, also our captain this year. So, Cern has been phenomenal, really, throughout the season. Um, obviously, from the management point of view, we set for Lizzie and Eamon and obviously Zandra, uh, Arthur, Keith and etc. and Ken obviously in strength and condition. We tried to do what we could with the girls to try and get them motivated, put in certain plans and all. But from a captain's point of view and from a player's point of view, Siren really was a, a link for us with other girls who could talk to the girls and drive them on uh, from what we were trying to implement. And what happened this year was the girls and last year to an extent, the girls were able to come back to us with information of how we improve, how we drive them on what they think is working and what they don't think is working. So I'll put all that together as soon as the driving force from the player side and very easy to deal with, to talk to, communicate with. There was, I mean, there was no problem with her and anything, anything that this year threw up, she was a very positive and she went on and implemented everything that she thought she needed to do with the captain and the player and uh, from, a, from a management point of view she was amazing. Like, and for the players then to pick her as the player of the season it, it, it's fitting really, you know, it's fitting with the season we've had um, with what she's done over the years, so we couldn't be proud of her more, which is a great award to win, yeah. And for the second year running, you have one of your players winning the... Under eight, the under yeah, goals for the under eight goals season, so yeah. Laura Butler won it last year, and Suen, who got some fantastic goals this year, um, yeah, she was brilliant this year, uh, and she won the award for the Greystones goal. Obviously, we had a Carolina and Ellen and a few other girls were in that as well, but yeah, delighted for Suen. Who worked really hard, got a few other cracking goals, and uh, I mean, all the under goals as well. So, the boys ones are cracking as well. So, delighted that she won it, and uh, I suppose keeps the pressure on the women's under 17 to maybe try and do a hat trick next year. <laughs> but, yeah, and thanks to everyone who voted as well. Yeah, it's great. It was a long season, it's just Christmas now. We're now we finished two months before. So, the girls, I suppose, we all as a team, we worked really hard to, I suppose, aim to finish the season. And then about six weeks ago, they decided that we're not going to finish the season. So that was really hard. That was probably the hardest bit of news we got all year because when you're working up towards something, even though in these, I suppose, uncharted times, uh, you always work to a goal, work to a finish. That was gone and we didn't really know what to do. We were very disappointed when we got the opportunity to go back and play the final games. Everyone was delighted because then they could put into practice what they had been working towards. So that was brilliant. Obviously, the results didn't go our way. But uh, we obviously had a great game down in Cork, I suppose in Waterford again Cork, and Cork went down and won it yesterday. But, and then we had a few games up in Peamount and then we had a game against Shelburne here. So from that point of view, the girls really got an opportunity then to put in practice what they had in the field and finish their season. And there's something to be said about finishing the season because we're trying to promote the under-17s and the 19s next year and girls into the senior ranks. You need to really finish what you started. and. I suppose hopefully all the work that you've done comes to fruition, which I think it did for the girls. So now we'll just take a break and uh, have a Christmas, a safe Christmas, and see what happens in the new year. This season over now, plans start for 2021 and the introduction of the under-19s. Yeah, absolutely. I suppose this is something that um, we would have hoped would have come in this year, but for obvious reasons, we were looking to get through the season as it was without bringing in more stuff. So, yeah, so the 19s are in next year, and it's really important for a, a club, I suppose, like Wexford Dudes. Because we've great support at under 17s. Uh, some of our girls coming in are very young. They're into 17s. And what happened this year was some of the girls went and last year went from 17s to the senior women. They've done really well. They're dual signed, but it's a big step. So the, 19, the introduction of the 19s now will allow girls to still play for the 17s and dual sign for the women's. But then the girls who are overage go into the 19s, 
get their game time with the 19s and then also train and interact with the women's team, get on the women's team and panel as well. So the 19s is very important from 17s to the 19s because of the pathway and then to get into the women's senior setup, you know, it'll always take players a couple of years to get in. So when you go from 19s to women's, senior women's, and you're allowed to play it on the 19s, week in, week out, also with training with the women, also with playing with the women from, you know, certain players will play certain weeks or whatever. That interaction will be very good for the pathway, for the confidence. And uh, I suppose some of the senior women are 10 years out. So for the girls coming in at 17s and 19s, for them to break into that initially is difficult. So I think the 19s and uh, is very, was very important for the progression of, of our club. Also other clubs around the country have the same opinion. They're really looking forward to the 19s for the same reasons. That you can now build a very strong senior women's league uh, made up of a pathway of girls coming right through the ranks from the game of cup right up. So, so yeah, 19 is great, very exciting. We have great interest at the moment uh, with the 17s and 19s. Um, and we want to start promoting that now towards the new year. Just to let everyone know that whatever way next year, whatever way the season, I suppose, works out or formulates next year, we will still have 17s and 19s and training will commence when we're able to commence and then we will just work in the matches as per this year and we'll be looking by the government uh, guidelines but we will have teams in all the major groups next year we'll put everything that we can into it to try and make it a success whatever the, the, the climate you know so yeah it's a very very important year going forward for yeah. well as uh, coaches and players it was obviously a very demanding year for parents yeah it surely was i suppose sometimes the parents have forgotten heroes here uh, they do the driving uh, in every match, every training session, and then obviously the girls are on programmes. Some have to go to gyms or some have to go up to local pitches or whatever to do to do the, the, the S&C during the week. So with the parents, I don't know, seven days this year has been phenomenal. I, I just, every one of them, they interacted with us. There was never a problem. We actually couldn't get buses towards the end, and the parents had no problem in driving. Obviously, you couldn't share journeys and all with the COVID. So, look, parents were fantastic this year. Um, and without them, this couldn't have happened. We couldn't have finished our season without our cooperation. Sponsors as well. I mean, with a lot in this tough year, with a lot of sponsors as well. They really, you know, came up with the financial assistance that we need. Uh, the FAI, in fairness to came in with a, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of COVID funding as well that was badly needed. Put that with the sponsors. Uh, that really helped make this season, I suppose, a success of finishing out uh, and uh, I suppose the, um, the club as well and the facilities, again, very, you know, very carry, uh, Carlo IT, you know, we have WIT as well for some training sessions. So in the southeast with Wexford Juice, we're very lucky to have all these, I suppose, these uh, uh, colleges and very carry facilities that we can use. Uh, and then obviously the club here, uh, Wexford FC and Wexford Women's FC. Um, we really have two clubs in one, really, and everyone supports us uh, with the media team and yourself, I suppose. Um, so, yeah, and Tom and Eddie, there's just great people around us. A committee there, two committees there now, who I suppose are working, and their only sole focus is to make, uh, I suppose, the club stronger. You've had a fantastic backroom team behind you as well for the past couple of years. Um, do you want to just mention a few names there just to? let people know how, how many people are involved with yeah, what Yeah, look, I suppose we're very lucky actually. I suppose we've Lizzie, everyone knows Lizzie, Lizzie's head coach and everyone, everything else I suppose to everyone. She really, um, I suppose, drives on the group from a coaching point of view on the field, but also off the field. Lizzie's a huge help in everything that goes on. Uh, Eamon Kent, Eamon's the assistant manager, but Eamon could, could, could manage you know, any team. He's, He's just excellent at what he does and his insight and his passion for it as well, as well as Lizzie, I suppose. Um, and then Ken is strength and condition. Ken is, uh, I suppose, he's really focused on what he does and the girls really understand if they follow what he does, what he wants them to do, they will make serious improvements, which is what they did. So Ken is fantastic. Arthur in the goal. Um, Arthur was mainly the goalkeeping coach, but he actually provided a lot more uh, than that this year. He just came in with us, I suppose. Uh, Arthur was a great addition to the squad. Xander's was for three years. Xander is a, is a brilliant coach with us in fairness. He, uh, he knows the setup, knows the girls, and he implements his, his system with Lizzie. Uh, and that's helped us to progress where we are. Keith, uh, Keith does our logistics and he does a lot of, does a lot of our COVID stuff as well. So Keith's a very important part of, of, of our makeup, you know. And then outside that, I suppose, we have Becky and Freya and Nina, who are there every game. They're really the player liaisons to keep us on our toes about what the girls might want and 
how we can do things better from. So that's really very important for us, you know. Um, there's probably others I forgot. We have, I mean, Kylie Murphy uh, and uh, Rossi come in uh, in the last, I suppose, elite phase of games and really give the girls an insight of what it's like to compete at the highest level. Um, that was fantastic for us, you know. They just they just went around and done their thing that they do. They don't even really know what to do, really, to be honest. Um, when they came into our group, they just spoke to the girls about what it's like to play in these matches and how to conduct yourselves and discipline yourselves and give it everything. And that's what the girls done, and they really took insight from them. So, so look, we're just very lucky, and that's just a, a, the close knit uh, group that we have. Obviously, we have a club behind us with parents I and mean, everyone. So, look. We're just very thankful for that, and that is a small, I suppose, it's only a small, uh, I suppose, bit of thanks, but the work that they've done, uh, if I be here, I'd like to thank them really, you know, so, very lucky, very lucky. Um, and so, look, we'll, I suppose, see what happens next year, we'll all get a, a good break now, a well-deserved break, I think, by everyone, Christmas is upon us now, so, hope everyone has a safe Christmas, and we'll get a break and see what the new year brings, you know. That's brilliant, thanks very much. Thanks, Anthony, thanks.